Well, hello, God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here today, and I pray that you are having a wonderful day. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, my friends, I want to go directly to something that is on my heart that I want to share with you today uh, as I invite you to service tonight. If you're, if you're where you can grab hold to your Bibles, grab hold to it, and if you're not, just uh, read it later, but but it's a passage of scripture that the Lord put on my heart to share with you today. And it's from first John chapter number four, verse one. Many of you know this particular passage. It says, beloved, he's speaking to the, to the saints and he's using a term of endearment. Beloved, beloved, he says, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. That is test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Now, what is John saying to the body of believers as he calls them in that affectionate term, beloved? And uh, he says to them, believe not every spirit that is, do, word spirit, uh, pneuma, is the is the is the Greek word spirit here doctrine uh the first definition of spirit literally my friends you might laugh at this is like a breeze a breeze, spirit, but it is a, a, a current, a breeze. It is a thought, a doctrine, uh, any teaching that is contrary to the teachings of Christ. He says, believe not every spirit. And John in this writing strikes a blow at two false doctrines that was pro prominent during his time. One was the doctrine of antinomianism and the other was the doctrine of, per of perfection. Perfectionism, anti-nominism, anti against nominism norms, against rules. They believe that when a person got saved, they were saved by grace plus nothing and no human effort, no change, no living holy, nothing was uh, required at all. And the other doctrine was the doctrine of perfectionism, which taught that the moment you give your heart to Christ, your, the sin nature is cut out and we have no more desire to sin. We have no more sins at all. Well, obviously both of these doctrines were untrue. And Paul warned the, bel the beloved. I said, Paul, John, he warned the beloved. He said, uh, 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 beloved, believe not every spirit, but test them. Test what's being preached to you. Test what you're being taught. Believe not every spirit for many false prophets have gone out into the world. What Paul was saying was many false prophets from us, from our congregation have gone out into the the world, many false teachers from among us. And Paul, uh, John said this in first John chapter number two, verse 18 and 19, little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard that antichrist shall come, even now there are many antichrist. This is how we know that this is the last time. And he said this, which is interesting. He said, they went out from us, but they were not of us for had they been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out from us that it might be manifested that they were not all of us. So many being raised up in the church that where John was, they actually defected from the church. They left the church and began to teach doctrines that were contrary to the church. So he's warning them, as believers, listen to me now, you've got to protect your mind. You got to protect your eyes. You got to protect your ear gate. You got to protect what's, uh, what's being said. I want to warn you, make sure you, you're careful as to who's whispering in your ear for Satan would love to pull you off track. Be careful what you watch on television. Be careful uh, to where you consume uh, from whom you consume your news and from whom you learn about the things that are going on in this world. Be careful with social media. Be careful. Be careful. Test everything that is thrown against you. And you say, well, how do I test it, Bishop? What do I do? I'm glad you asked. 
Here's how you do it. Verse two tells us how. Hereby we know the spirit of God. Here's how we know <clears throat> that a thing is from God. Every spirit, every doctrine, every uh, pneuma. See, I said earlier, pneuma is a false doctrine, but no, it's a doctrine. It's a teaching. It's an ideology. If it's true, it's true. If it's false, it's false. So he says here, every spirit, every pneuma, every doctrine that confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. What is the point of this? The point is simply this. The way you know whether or not a teaching is accurate or inaccurate, you start with wanting to know where is Jesus in this? What, what place does Christ hold? You who are thinking about becoming a part of a secret organization, you who are thinking about pledging, ask the, the organizations, ask the fraternity, ask the sorority. If you're born again, ask what role does Christ play? Who is Christ in this? All right. If you are watching and if you're considering uh, counsel and you're going to a secular counselor, Ask the counselor, what role does Christ play in your counsel? Are you following me? If um, someone is trying to recruit you to a particular religion, a denomination, uh, re recruit you and uh, pull you away from the teachings of the Bible, ask them, who is Jesus? Did Jesus die on the cross or did he merely appear to die on the cross. Do you believe that Christ is coming back? Do you believe that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin? Do you believe that Christ lived a sinless life? Do you believe, praise the Lord, that Christ is coming again? Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the way, that is the only way, the truth, and the life? See, these are the things. See, you pay attention to what they say about Jesus. Do you believe that Jesus Christ, uh, this thing that you want me to join, do you guys believe that Jesus Christ actually came in the flesh? That is, that Jesus Christ actually walked the earth? That Jesus, while he walked the earth, was more than a mere prophet, more than a mere man? but that he was indeed the Christ, the Messiah. Praise the Lord. And if the answers to these probing questions are answers that do not line up with the scripture, keep booking, baby. Go on, leave them alone. Don't become a part of that because that's false. Doesn't matter how sophisticated it may sound. Gary, I know people go out into the into the uh, wilderness and they have these darkness crusades. A lot of athletes talk about that now. And people have gone through these so-called birthing things and oh my, all out there in the desert, no food, no water, several days in the dark. And no Bible, no Jesus. And you come back with some type of new revelation. You've been misled. You've been misled. You followed the wrong pneuma. You followed the wrong spirit. You've got to stay with Jesus Christ and, and stay with the Bible. He says here, every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, that Christ actually came, that Christ lived and died, that Christ walked the earth, lived a sinless life, died on the cross, rose again the third day, ascended back to heaven and is going to return. He says every doctrine, every pneuma that fails to teach this is not of God. And if it's not of God, I got a question for you, my friends. What are you doing in it? And why is it in your church? If it's not of God and you are of God, then why are you a part of it? And pastors, why do you allow this to take place in your church? The Bible says it's not of God. Well, who is it? He says, and this is the spirit of Antichrist. Antichrist, Antichrist. Interesting word, anti opposed to. In the place of and against. Opposed to, in the place of against Christ, opposed to, in the place of, against Christ. If it's opposed to Christ, you have Christ on the inside, why are you in it? If it's against Christ and you love Jesus, why are you a part of that? 
Praise the Lord. See, if it's opposed to Christ, opposed to Christ, against Christ, and if it's in the place of Christ, then why would you be in, in anything that takes the place of Christ or demotes Christ at all? Demotes Christ at all. I couldn't be a Muslim because Christ is demoted. I couldn't be a Buddhist because Christ is uh, not at the head of, of that movement. I couldn't be a part of these things. And I'm going to tell my Catholic friends something, that Jesus Christ is not subject subject to the Virgin Mary. She was his mother. She was awesome. She was a wonderful lady. But you know what? She had to accept Jesus as Savior also, and she was not a part of deity. So there's no need in praying to her. We need to pray to the Father in Jesus' name. Don't mean to step on any toes. I'm not trying to make any enemies. But listen, there's a lot of spirits out there. There's a lot of doctrines. There's a lot of movements. How are you going to be have Christ operating on the inside of you and you are part of a movement that celebrates Planned Parenthood killing all of the unborn babies and, and you're celebrating lifestyles that the Bible calls an abomination. Do you follow what I'm saying? You see, when Jesus Christ is the driver, when Jesus Christ is your pilot, forget that stuff, Christ, Christ is my co-pilot, that's the problem. <laughs> You need to get out of the cockpit altogether, go back there and sit at the back of the plane and let Jesus Christ do the flying. Because if he does the flying, everything's going to be all right. If he's got to share the cockpit with you and you and Jesus do this together and, uh, you know, you, you're telling him what's what. Mm -mm, Christ not going to participate in that. So he says right here, let me wrap this up. But he says this is powerful. So this is the spirit of Antichrist. Well, this is verse three. Wherefore you have heard that it should come and is even now already in the world. The spirit of Antichrist is already here. The Bible says this to the readers, to the readers. John said this to the, to the recipients of his letter. You are of God, little children. Look at these terms of endearment. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Praise God. This is why you ought to serve him with your whole heart. Stay with him because he's the greatest that there is. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That is the Antichrist and all of his false teachings. You can take all these false doctrines. Throw them into a pot, mix them together, shake it up real good, boil them, praise the Lord, then put them in the oven and bake them, take them out, put them on a grill and grill them. And when you get through, and with all you got is a grilled, fried, shaken, thrown together mess. The truth is God's word. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They... Speaking of the Antichrist and his false teachers, they are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world hear with them. Man, I wish I had time, Gary, to really talk about this, because, you know, that's part of the problem. So many, many churches are showing you that they've left Jesus. They've left Jesus because they're too worldly. They sound like the world. They talk like the world. They've adopted the world's nomenclature. These preachers who find who sound more like motivational speakers than preachers. I can't get I can't get over that we have preachers today who call themselves coaches. <laughs> you know, God called me to be a coach. Now, where is that in the fivefold ministry? I mean, where'd you find that at in the Bible? <laughs> I wouldn't take the pay cut. I wouldn't take the demotion. I thank God for being a pastor. I thank God for being a bishop. I thank God for biblical language. I wouldn't, man, I wouldn't spend a day walking around calling myself a life coach, this kind of coach. Yes, I'm a coach. Coaching what? Thank, I thank God for the coaching profession, but coaches coach teams, uh, sporting teams, but the preacher is God's man. I've never read, Gary, where the Bible says, how can they hear without a coach? But I've read, how can they hear without a preacher? Praise the Lord. I, I've never read what Jesus says, go ye therefore into all the world and coach all nations. He told us to teach them. He never said, go ye therefore into all the world, just coach the gospel. He says, preach the gospel. 
Praise the Lord. We're, we're called. Let's, let's use the biblical language. Why are you trying to sound so much like the world? I'll tell you what it is. It's the spirit of Antichrist. Watch it. Watch it. You go to church after church now, and you look around, and you can't even find the cross. What is that all about? Listen, we need to make sure that we're staying with the word of the Lord. Lastly, and I know I'm trying your patience today, they are of the world, therefore the world here with them. Then he says to the apostles, we are of God. This is to those who preach the word. This is those who declare the word of God. We are of God. Now, let me tell you something about your congregation. He, everyone that knoweth God, heareth us. He that is not of God, heareth us not. Hereby know we the spirit of truth from the spirit of error. We are of God. We're preaching the word of God. Well, people who are of God, who love God, and who want the God of the Bible will hear, recognize, say amen to, accept, walk in, and believe the word of God. They love the Bible. They love it when their pastor preach from the Bible, read the scripture, explain the scripture, praise the Lord, praise God. That's a good sign. That's a good sign when you're talking to someone who's just excited about the Bible, excited about scripture. And regards to how the scripture is taught or preached, it can be it can be just, you know, monotone and you, you're just as cool, calm and collected as can be. Or you could be shouting from the rooftop. If it's God's word, it blesses you real good. But those out there who said, you know, I don't want to hear certain preachers preach because they preach too much Bible. All they do is talk about the Bible. I don't want to go to a certain church because they're just so churchy, so churchy, so churchy. I don't want to hear this preacher because all he's going to do is say the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says. And, uh, and the, the, all these preachers do is talk about, talk about Jesus, 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 Jesus. Well, you're hearing from people who are not of God. Now, they may be religious, Brother Gary, they may be religious. They may be in church. Praise the Lord. I'm not saying you don't go to church. <laughs> I'm not saying that you don't put on a suit and tie. I'm not saying that you don't look the part. I'm not saying that you're not an usher. I'm not saying that you're not a bishop, a pastor, a superintendent. I'm not saying that you're not a moderator. Oh, no, you may be all of those things. But I tell you one thing, if you don't love the word of God, you're not of God. And I didn't say it. The Bible says it. And you're walking in the spirit of error. And when people are walking, you got to know how to recognize error, which he's going back, bro Brother Gary, to the point he was making in the first verse. See, now we see how we try the spirits, how we test them, how we know the difference between listening to error and truth. Glory to God. I'm glad today that I'm on the Lord's side. Now, brother, now, saints, I've given you this little... Uh, uh, Bible study, Brother Gary told me not to use the word little. I've given you this Bible study today. <laughs> now listen, we're going to have a mighty time at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. On this day, uh, the 30th of, of May, yours truly, I'm uh, in, by the time you see this, uh, Orlando, Florida, at the Women's Convention of the Church of God in Christ. The Lord willing, I will be at the Upper Room this coming Sunday in the pulpit delivering the Word of God. But we have a mighty, mighty warrior lined up to give you the word of the Lord tonight. God's going to bless us in a mighty way. But on those times when I can't be with you, I like to leave something with you in terms of a little Bible lesson. So I just want to encourage you to read first John chapter number four, verses one through six. As a matter of fact, read the whole chapter down, all the way down through verse 21. It is choked with good stuff because that's what the Bible is filled with good good stuff. The word of God is good for your bones and for the marrow. Oh, it's good for his health to thy navel. The word of God is what we need today. Now, my friends, I thank God for you. I love you with the love of the Lord. Thank you for your support. Thank you for how you're praying for this preacher. Thank you for the, the, the many texts, uh, cards, 
letters. You, you communicate with this preacher on a regular basis and you have hardened my heart. You have emboldened me. You have strengthened me and encouraged me to continue to stand on the word of God. And I'm going to do just that. And we're going to stand together. And I tell you what we're not, here's what we're going to do. We're going to obey God's word. We're going to believe not every spirit, but we're going to test the spirits to see whether they are from God. So join us tonight right here at the upper room church of God in Christ for Bible study, Bible study, Bible teaching and Bible preaching. Though one of the good things about this great church is that God has given us many who can teach and preach the word of God. I'll see you Sunday. The Lord's willing. God bless. Oh, by the way, Jesus pride starts when I return and I'm excited about the month of June because we're not going to give an inch. Praise God. The LBGTQ community have declared this government. <laughs> wow. Have declared the month of June LBGTQ month. We've declared that it's Jesus pride. We're going to go with pride. We're going to go with pride. But we have Jesus pride. Aren't you proud of being a Christian? Christian pride. Aren't you proud of being born again? Aren't you proud that you know the Lord? Aren't you proud that you're not walking in an abominable lifestyle? All right. It's on. And we're ready for it. God bless.